Get the home field advantage every time with Fairfield by Marriott, official hotel partner of the NCAA. Whether you're a student athlete working toward your championship dreams or your team's biggest fan, Fairfield by Marriott has everything you need to get ready for game day. From comfortable guest rooms to complimentary hot breakfast, Fairfield is part of the Marriott Bonvoy portfolio of hotels and official hotel partner of the NCAA. Visit fairfield.marriott.com to book your next game day stay. Welcome into The Verge, a show which covers the Baltimore Orioles minor leagues. The Verge is part of BSL Radio. Baltimore Sports and Life is dedicated to analysis and discussion on the Orioles, Baltimore Ravens, and the University of Maryland. The site has a team of writers providing coverage of those teams and houses live streaming content weekly. Join the conversations at the message board, like BSL on Facebook, and follow BSL on Twitter. On Twitter. Want to make a podcast? Spotify's got a platform that lets you make one super easily, then distribute it everywhere and even earn money all in one place for free. It's called Spotify for Podcasters, and here's how it works. Spotify for Podcasters lets you record and edit podcasts right from your phone or computer, so no matter what your setup is like, you can start creating today. Then you can distribute your podcast to Spotify and everywhere else podcasts are heard. Video podcasts are also available on Spotify. With Spotify for Podcasters, you can earn money in a variety of ways, including ads and podcast subscriptions. And best of all, it's totally free with no catch. Ever since we discovered Spotify for Podcasters, we feel like having options like video podcasts and Q&A lets us be more creative on another level. I highly recommend you give it a try. Download the Spotify for Podcasters app or go to www.spotify.com slash podcasters to get started. For the first time since becoming an affiliate of the Baltimore Orioles back in 2007, the Norfolk Ties are your 2023 International League champions after taking down the Durham Bulls in a best of three series. The 2023 season was just the fifth season since 2007 that the Tides had secured a record of 500 or better. Just five seasons. It has not been pretty in Norfolk since the Tides became an Orioles affiliate, but this year was a dominant year. Seven franchise records broken, and they've taken on the Durham Bulls, a team who in the last 25 years has made 19 playoff appearances in the International League. They've won the International League title nine times. They've won five overall AAA titles. The Durham Bulls have been a wagon since joining the International League a quarter century ago. The Norfolk Tides ended that dynasty this week. Again, a best of three series that started on Tuesday night. The Tides fell in that first game on Tuesday night. 10-5, to five, they fell to Durham but we're able to outscore the Bulls 14-2 to two over the next two nights in complete control, dominating in Game 3 from this jump from the top of the first inning with Kate Povich on the mound uh, to secure this victory. The Tides will now travel, a quick turnaround, the Tides will travel to Las Vegas for the AAA Championship. Just one game, no best of three, no best of five, just one game, winner take all, against the Pacific Coast League champions, the Oklahoma City Dodgers. They took down, I believe it was Round Rock, uh, two games uh, in two games in their best of three series. So one game Saturday night in Las Vegas, 10 p.m. Eastern start time for that one. So uh, hopefully, if you survive a full day of college football on Saturday, uh, then you get a nice little treat of AAA Championship Baseball, 10 p.m. We get one more game before the minor league season is finally over, and I'm not mad about that. Uh, Going into this series, just wanted to kind of do a little recap podcast here. I'll probably send this one out to the entire main feed as well, because why not? The Orioles clinched the AL East, uh, biggest news of the night, by the way, uh, 100 wins, the announcement that there is a new 30-year lease, and I believe Andy Costco was reporting there are two five-year options added to that, but still 30 more years of Orioles baseball in Baltimore. I don't think there was ever any real doubt about the Orioles leaving, but still, uh, it's there. It's written. It's done. Contract is finalized, apparently. The Nashville jokes can end. <laughs> the Orioles are not going anywhere. Physically, they're not going anywhere. As far as the play on the field, they're not going away anytime soon either. The contention window is fully open right now. It's not closing anytime soon. Still a lot of work to do this year. The playoffs are going to be a gauntlet. A lot of great teams, a lot of teams clicking right now. But the Orioles are sitting with that number one overall seed. As of right now, things are looking pretty in Birdland. We'll worry about the playoffs later. Come out Monday night. Checker spot brewing. Uh, we'll celebrate 
the playoffs. Orioles get a nice little break clinching this, not having to play in the wild card. So we can come out and celebrate, have a good time, Monday night at Checker Spot Brewing, 6.30 p.m. Uh, come hang out, celebrate the Orioles' magical season. We'll have Cutter Newcomb from Locked on Orioles coming on, and then a trio of Baltimore Banner, Daniel Allentuck, uh, Andy Casca, and John Mioli will all join us as well. Get to talk to all of them. Should have a great time. But talking about the Norfolk Tides in this series, coming into the series, I was anxious to see how this series is going to play out for a couple of reasons. One, like I mentioned, the Durham Bulls have been dominant all year. This is a team that still has a lot of Durham's or Tampa Bay's top prospects. They've got guys like Francisco Mejia behind the plate, a guy with pretty extensive MLB experience, even though it has been great MLB experience. Still pretty veteran-laden roster, a lot of top prospects here. The pitching as well, good pitching prospects, good pitching experience down here. While the Tides were kind of a little bit different when it came to pitching, Justin Armbruster, one of the top pitchers on this Norfolk roster for this entire second half of the season, he pitched, I believe, the final day of the regular season, so didn't think we were going to see him. And in fact, before the series started on Tuesday, he was, for paperwork purposes, uh, sent down to Bowie. I'm sure he was still there in the clubhouse celebrating with his boys, but for just paperwork purposes, he had to be sent down to Bowie. They brought up an extra bat in Greg Cullen just in case, but with Arm Brewster having just pitched the final day of the regular season, I didn't think we would see him in this series. Maybe an inning or two in relief if this series went to three games, but at the same time, player development still has to come first. Winning the championship, I'm sure, is super nice. I know these guys, especially the guys who have been in Norfolk all year, really appreciate this. Guys like Nick Vespi, especially the guy who closed it out. He recorded the final out of this game, pitched the, the ninth inning, and was able to clinch this one for the Tides. I'm sure it felt good for him as well after the season that he's endured. But still, player development has to come first over winning this championship series. So Justin Arnbruce has already reached, reached his uh, career high in innings pitch this year. Didn't think they'd run him back out there and risk injury if they didn't have to. Chase McDermott, his season ended a couple of weeks ago with a back injury, so we knew we weren't going to see him either. So the Tides are down two of their better pitchers. And then some of the veteran options, guys like Bruce Zimmerman and Cole Irvin, you know, wondering how much are they going to want to use these guys in this playoff series, thinking hopefully the Orioles in the major league level are going to clinch. And then maybe we can dial it back a little bit with these starters, give them some rest of these last couple of days of the season. And maybe you throw up Bruce Zimmerman and say, if you got to wear it, wear it, but give us five, six innings. Um, so just thinking some of the bullpen arms as well, likely see them in Baltimore to give some of the major league guys some rest as we close out the season this week. But the Tides are able to put it together with some unbelievable pitching performances. Didn't quite come in game one though, as Bruce Zimmerman did get the start in game one, going back to Tuesday night, pitched just two innings again, as I kind of expected, keeping him fresh just in case. Struck out two, did allow a home run, uh, one run on two hits in total. Garrett Stallings coming in in relief. He had eight strikeouts in five innings. He's been dominant in the month of September. Really good outing here. Kept the Norfolk Tides in position to win this game, but Nick Vespi would come in to begin the eighth inning on Tuesday night, and he gave up four runs on just one hit, recorded just one out, no strikeouts, and three walks for Vespi. Not a good night. Another reason why it was really awesome to see him be the guy to close things out on Thursday night. TJ McFarland, not too much better, even though he has pitched well since being signed to a minor league deal earlier this year. McFarland walked two with no strikeouts, giving up a run on one hit in two-thirds innings of work before Michael Bauman came in and closed things out in the ninth inning. He did give up a walk and one run on one hit, recording three strikeouts. But the damage was done as Durham had jumped out to a 10-3 to lead. Norfolk was able to scrape across two runs in the bottom of the ninth thanks to a Lewin Diaz two-run homer, but it would not be enough. In this game, Connor Norby kind of led the way offensively. He went 3-4 for four with a home run. Kobe Mayo was 1-4 for four with a double and two RBIs as Mayo had an unbelievable three-game championship series. Kyle Stowers had a base hit. And that was about it as far as the offense was concerned. Jackson Holiday and Colton Kowser were combined 0 for 8 with no walks and four strikeouts in this game. It was a tough one. But this team turned it around on Wednesday night in Game 2. Cole Irvin getting the start. And the duo of Cole Irvin and Austin Voth were flat out dominant. Irvin going three scoreless with no walks and five strikeouts. 
giving way to Austin Voth, who pitched four scoreless, giving up just two hits, and those two hits did not come until the very end of his outing. Did not walk a single batter and struck out nine, picking up the victory in this one. Brian Baker and Joey Crable closed it out, made it interesting as they closed out. Not too interesting, though. It still was a 7-2 victory for Norfolk, but Brian Baker gave up a home run, giving up two runs in total in his inning of work. And Joey Crable pitched a scoreless ninth inning, but did walk two batters and made things a little bit shaky there in the ninth inning. But Norfolk had jumped out to a 7-0 lead going into the top of the eighth inning. The offense woke up a little bit more Wednesday night. Jackson Holiday was 2-for-4 with a double and a walk. Colton Kowser and Connor Norby combining to go 0-for-9. But Kobe Mayo, Kyle Stowers, and Joey Ortiz, 4-5-6 hitters in this lineup, were the ones that carried this team in Game 2. Kobe Mayo going 1-for-3 with a home run, an RBI, and a walk. Kyle Stowers just missing the ultimate uh, cycle. He went 3-for-3 with a double, a triple, a home run, and a walk and an RBI. He was just missing the single in this one. And then Joey Ortiz, the first time that we saw Joey Ortiz for a while due to an injury, he went two for three with a double, drove in three, and had a walk. Fantastic defense, of course, playing second base in this one. Kind of the standard six, seven inning appearance in your first game back off injury. The Orioles have done this with hitters all year long down in the minors. Josh Lester, Lewin Diaz, Maverick Hanley rounded out the lineup 7-8-9 in game two. Lewin Diaz, the only guy to record a base hit, a single in there. But again, the trio of Kobe Mayo, Kyle Stowers, and Joey Ortiz carried the way in game two. Finally, game three, a 7 0 shutout on Thursday night. Norfolk Tides out hitting Durham 11 3 in this game. Jackson Holiday again hitting leadoff, playing shortstop. He went one for four with a home run in RBI and a walk. Connor Norby was two for five with a triple and a single. Colton Kowser was one for five in this one. Kobe Mayo, perfect. Four for four with a home run, a double, and four RBIs on the Knights. Again, he hit 545 with an 1888 OPS in this series. Kyle Stowers is one for three with two walks. Joey Ortiz had a couple unbelievable plays. A double play, ranging to his right, ranging to his left, doing it all at second base, going one for five with an RBI at the plate. Lewin Diaz was one for four with an RBI single as well. On the mound, Cade Povich got the start, and it did take him over 80 pitches, 85 to be exact, 85 pitches to get through just four innings but they were four scoreless innings. He walked three. He struck out four. Recording that fourth strikeout to end the fourth inning, he was fired up. This entire team was. These guys wanted it. It was clear as day with their attitude on the mound. Kyle Dowdy came in relief with three no-hit innings and two strikeouts. Juanison Charles had a scoreless inning, and Nick Vespi, as I mentioned, closed it out with a scoreless inning, recording his lone strikeout, the final out of the game. Offensively, the bats, though, were hot. If you pull up the Baseball Savant page, eight of the nine Tides hitters had at least one hard hit ball. Connor Norby had three. Again, that is a ball hit at 95 miles per hour or harder. Joey Ortiz, 109 miles per hour. Kobe Mayo, 108.3. Jackson Holiday, 102.1. Joey Ortiz again in the top five there in exit velos at 101.8. If you're concerned about the Jackson Holiday over the fence power and when that's going to start to show up, well, he showed it in this one with that 102.1 102.1 mile per hour exit velo home run. So looking ahead to Saturday's championship game in Las Vegas, the Oklahoma City Dodgers, like I mentioned, they did win their best of three series, two to nothing over Round Rock, the Texas Rangers AAA affiliate. No surprise here that the Orioles and Dodgers are going to be the two organizations sending teams to the AAA championship. Looking at Oklahoma City's roster they do have three top 100 prospects on this roster infielder michael bush who's ranked 44th overall looking at mlb mlb pipelines top 100 ranking Uh, right-handed pitcher nick frasso is number 65 and right-handed pitcher gavin stone is number 79 now according to the oklahoma city roster as of thursday night nick frasso is on the development list so you're not going to see him uh, some other MLB veteran guys, Robbie Erling is on this roster, but on the development list, Zach Birdie on the 60-day IL, Matt Andres currently on the 7-day IL. And as far as hitters go, you do have some MLB veteran guys like Tucker Barnhart behind the plate, but he is also on the, the development list. Old friend Pat Vileka is on the roster, but also on the development list. Uh, so you do have uh, Michael Bush, really the only top 100 prospect hitter, 
Meanwhile, the Norfolk Tides sending five top 100 prospects just in their lineup alone, including number one overall prospect Jackson Holiday, Kobe Mayo, Connor Norby, Joey Ortiz, and Colton Kowser. So who will pitch for the Tides? Don't know yet. Haven't seen any announcement yet. Still very early. I imagine that Justin Armbruster gets put back on the roster and we see Justin Armbruster make the start. I think that makes a lot of sense. Pending any moves on the Major League side as well, the Tides will have the full complement of relievers down there, fully healthy and well-rested. Ryan Watson, Nick Vespi should be good to go if needed. Uh, uh, Cole Irvin can give you a couple innings probably as well. Of course, Michael Bauman, Brian Baker as well. So this should be a good game. I'm excited for this one. I'm excited for these players who are going to get that opportunity to win another championship here. And hopefully some of these guys can contribute to the Major League Orioles roster as they enter the playoffs next week. But what a night in Birdland. This was definitely a lot of fun just watching these videos going up on social media over and over and over again. Of course, consuming all the Orioles podcast and content that is going to be coming out over the next couple of days. This team deserves it. Brandon Hyde deserves it. A lot of fun watching these guys, especially guys like Cedric Mullins and Santander and Austin Hayes, watching them, of course, celebrate after everything that they've been through on the major league side of things. And then from from our point of view, covering the minor leagues these last couple of years, you know, we started this back in 2020, right before the pandemic. So, you know, Adley Rutschman had already been in the system for a year. Gunnar Henderson had already been in the system for a year. But still, a lot of these guys, we followed them from the very beginning. And it's been really cool to watch someone like Gunnar Henderson. I remember his very first game in 2020 with Del Marva, 2021, excuse me, in Del Marva. And just that game, the power that he was showing early on in Del Marva, hitting balls out of the park that people were saying not many people hit home runs out of that stadium at that spot. But Gunnar Henderson was doing it there as, as a teenage prospect. Little did we know Gunnar Henderson would now be in the major leagues in the 2023 season, likely, hopefully, the American League Rookie of the Year and leading the way offensively for this team as they enter the playoffs as the number one seed, 100 wins and counting for this team. Adley Rutschman behind the plate, Grayson Rodriguez emerging as a star on this team as far as starting pitching prospects are concerned. D.L. Hall, you know, the, the road to becoming an MLB starter has been rocky for D.L. Hall, but he's been very good out of the bullpen. As we've said many times, he was so good when he got his chance in the bullpen last year in the major leagues. I was hoping, just put him back in the bullpen. If you want to do him as a starter, you can try it again next year, maybe. But D.L. Hall, I think, can have a very successful career out of the bullpen. He had a great night as well. He's had a good stretch since entering this Orioles bullpen. Heston Kerstad is now up in the big leagues, and you know, he's not playing a ton. Kind of figured that would be the case when he got the call up, but still, it's the kids that are doing it. The kids are leading the way. Cedric is great. Santander has been unbelievable. Hayes, it's been another up and down year. But there's been a lot of good with Austin Hayes. Yeah, the veterans, Aaron Hicks is even been contributing, right? The veterans have been doing it, but as a podcast that covers the minor league system, it's been extra special now to watch these guys this year, watch so many of the young guys step up in major ways, become leaders on this team, and not just pry the window open, but fling this contention window wide open and now announce to all of Major League Baseball that the Orioles are here. Now, the Orioles are going to be here for a very long time. Hopefully you made your money this year because I don't think the over-under on wins next year is going to be in the 70s. I think it's going to be pretty high. Vegas is going to be all over the Orioles now. So hopefully we made our money this year because the Orioles are here. Uh, again, we are going to celebrate with a live show Monday night, October 2nd, Checker Spot Brewing, very close to Oriole Park at Camden Yards. Come over, come hang out, have some beers, order some food, hang out. We've got great guests. Yeah, we'll talk some prospects, but at the end of the day, the Orioles are the AL East champions. They're going to the playoffs, so we're going to focus on that, I think, first and foremost, and have some fun with this. Celebrate. Have a good time. Hopefully, see some of you all out there. In the meantime, uh, check us out on Patreon, patreon.com slash on the verge. There is a fantastic WhatsApp community, a private chat that you get access to. We will keep the content coming throughout the offseason as well, bonus content for patrons only. 
in the meantime, have a great weekend. Hopefully Friday is not too rough for everybody. It's like 11, 1130 at night, but I'm going to go have some more. And I will talk to you all again Monday night, Checker Spot Brewing. See y'all then. That'll do it for this week's episode of On The Verge. Be sure to check out our Patreon page where you can help show your support for the show and get bonus content, including monthly top 50 updates to our prospect list and daily game recaps during the season and much, much more. High Five Casino. Social casino fun with real prizes and big Vegas hits. Have you had your High Five moment today? Hey there, I'm Bob. Before High Five Casino, my high fives were more like low threes. But after my high five moment, boom, high fives all around. That's the spirit. High Five Casino is turning every moment into a high five moment. Visit h5c.fun. That's h, the number five, c, dot f-u-n. And start spinning and winning today. High Five Casino. High Five Casino is a social casino only. No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited. Play responsibly. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details.